fifth set is going to be played on Whirlwind. Spawning in the top left-hand position, the green Zerg from Wunjin Stars, winner of WCS Korea. His name is Soul Key. His opponent, bottom right position on the map, Red Protoss, playing for SK Telecom T1. His name is Rain. The score right now is 3-1 with Wungjin Stars taking the lead. Light took out Fantasy in set number 1. Bisu took out Bravo in set number 2. SOS Flying back to back took the games for Wungjin Stars as Parting and Best fell short. Yeah, the, the PVPs went to the Wungjin Star players. And... Yeah, I guess that means they have the better PvP team, or better Protoss well, lineup. If you, if you want to talk about something like that, all the mirror matchups went to... Hold on a second, we have a spawning pool at 10. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Actually, if you think about it from a mentality standpoint, in like mind games, this is so smart. Yeah, and Double Gastric also behind us as he's overlord, as the spawning pool is going to finish over here yeah. yeah getting an overload behind this and this is going to try the punish rain if he's going for a very greedy expansion here which uh, he is going for it yeah we actually have not seen early pulls against protoss and pro league in months actually i don't think we've seen a single one in heart of the swarm and we have not seen one in a long time in, except for wings of liberty remember that old map i don't even remember the name Cal caldea the map where it was, damn, yeah. you could you could like run around three different pathways, to, like attack your opponent's natural. That map was just not fun for Protoss. You know what's funny, however, the, the tempo actually didn't work out as well to the uh, against the Protoss players on that map because Protoss players they learned how to defend against the early Zergling rush from yeah. their opponent. Argo, I believe, was the first Protoss player to properly execute yeah. the defense against it. Now uh, we have a, a up to eight Zerglings in production here for Solki and. Uh, Oh. oh, they're going to the center of the map here, and yeah, uh, this is going to be bad for Rain. Very, very bad. Whoa, the gateway goes up, and the cannon goes up. The problem is, hello, Zerglings. Here come the Zerglings here. Rain's going to see this and just be like, all right, I guess I got to deal with this. Yeah, well, how do you deal against the Zerglings in this particular situation? It's, you have to pull the, uh, the probes, it's that simple, and you have to just micro like a Mac. You have to micro like a god, pretty much, to hold off here. And the smart thing from Solki is that he picked off the pylon as well as the cannon. That means that the gateway needed another pylon there to power it up, and... He does have the pylon. Right, he's and got the pylon here. Here's the thing. Oh, well, he's Rain. actually doing a good job yeah, defending Rain's against these, these uh, Zerglings here. But remember, this is not an all-in attack from Solki. In fact, oh. he's just buying a lot of time. The hatchery is at the natural, uh -oh. and he's picking apart on probes one by one. Fifth down to 15 probes right now. The probes inside the main base is gone. Yeah, already down the 13, workers the 18. Solki still has the Lings alive in the main base of Rain, and we do have a Zealot out now. The Zealot's going to be able to do a great job at dealing with these Zerglings here, but still... Uh, things could not get much worse for Rain right now. Yeah, and the problem is Solki, like I said, this is not an all-in, which means that he could tech up behind this. Looking at the drone count to the probe count, 19 drones to 15 probes. Solki can do anything that he wants right now, knowing that he is so far ahead in the work account. Yeah, and the Zerglings are still going to stay alive for at least like another minute or so. Another minute, even the cannon is not going to finish, and he's going to need more units to defend against the five Zerglings that Solki has. Yeah. In fact, if uh, Solki gets a good surround on the Zelda, it's going to get taken out by the five mm -hmm. Zerglings. You know, well, I know we're talking about Rain here, but if this was parting, I would say he would have a better shot at winning, because he's, he's, he's constantly faced scenarios like this. I mean, his old teammate was Life, who always would go for moves like this yeah. uh, to secure early advantages. But Rain, I feel like he may be a little bit less first against uh, moves like this. And Solki is just moving into a standard macro game. He's going to have a large drone advantage. Oh. And He's also not building probes with the main nexus. What you're supposed to do is, yes, make the probes, but also try to rally it towards, towards the natural. Yeah. And trying to get as many probes out. And... I mean, not, ooh, okay. I mean, yes, I kind of understand the reason why he's not building over here, because that's up to five Zerglings, but he needs to make sure that he is saturated yeah. at least at the natural. Actually, you know what Rain's doing here? He's cannoning the third base. 
Uh, I'd like to see him get another... Okay, there we go. I think two with cannons. those two cannons, he should be able to pick off that expansion relatively easily. And the thing is, the hatchery is going to finish before it sees the cannons. So... Rain's going to at least be able to keep this on two base versus two base, but Sulky still has a very large drone advantage. The hatchery uh, spots the cannons there, and are we going to see a response from Sulky? The response is Queen slowly moving out on the map and just watching the hatchery die. However, the Zerglings are still alive inside the main base, as there is only one Zod against the next uh, against the uh, five Zerglings. Sulky and just this. saying, all right, well, I'm just going to make an expansion in another spot. All right, we do see Rain starting to make a few more workers here. Really particular that he's not and peculiar that he's not making any from his main though. Here's the thing, even if he takes out the third hatchery, Rain is only down to one mining base, which means that Soki he could throw away the hatchery over there, just remake the different hatchery, and those three cannons in the pylon, 400, 550 minerals spent into this just mm -hmm. to take out one hatchery. Yeah, not a good trade. No. Not the best at all, considering Sulky is already ahead. I mean, it's going to at least help delay Sulky's economy a little bit on Rain's end. So I'd say that overall the investment is worth it, but you know, mm. I, I would I would have rather skimped off with two cannons instead yes. of three. But he didn't know how many Zerglings his opponent was nope. making, if there were roaches on the yeah. way. So he was just trying to do the best that he could in that scenario. Yeah, it's not like he got extra drones behind this. He got the queens behind this. 550 versus 300. The pure number fight between the cannons and the hatchery, Sulky took the advantage, I have to say. And now the cannons are useless at the 12 o'clock expansion. Yeah. In fact, the only thing that ha he has going for him right now is that the pylon is in fantastic position. Rain can warp in tons of gateway army, uh, gateway units mm -hmm. over at the 12 yeah. o'clock, but that's it. Uh, we do have a evolution chamber, Roach Horn, on the way. Um, we do also have the lair already complete. We see an overseer in production here. Zerglin speed about to complete as well. And uh, Rain just trying to do a little bit of harassment here. Needs the recall out of there or he's going to potentially lose that stalker instead using the time warp. And the problem is the Zerglin speed very close to completing. Rain smartly decides to pack it up his bags and go home. Yeah, and remember, even if he goes for the Nexus uh, recall, it doesn't even matter at this point. Just forcing his opponent to waste energy. That's the biggest problem right now, and the speedlings uh, do finish! Goodbye Zod, goodbye Stalker. Look behind this, Sulky is making up to 11 roaches. Looks like there is just... Rain can't catch break here. Well, and that's what happens if you try to play greedy, and that's the reason why I don't play greedy anymore on this particular map, because I've been 6 pulls so many times on that's, this particular map. Well, that's the Korean server for you, that they are going to 6 pull you. Yeah, well, also, it's a great on this map because it's hard to scout what the Zerg player is doing, and the Protoss player is probably expecting the hatchery first from his opponent, especially since the map is four players and it's so large. All right, here come the Roaches and the Zerglings. There are some sentries here for defense here. Rain's going to have to be on his game here. Good force, good force field right there. The cannon's going to get picked off quite fast as well, and the Roaches here may actually just end up winning this game straight up. Yeah, the problem is because he doesn't have enough gateways inside the main base. Because his economy has been, you know, taken down a lot earlier in the game, he doesn't have enough units to defend against the Roaches. And we have 20 Zerglings following us up. Mm. We have Hydras that could be possibly built from our Zerg player. And an additional macro hatchery. The supplies now 134 to 47. Sulky pretty much has this game, man. It's it's next to impossible for Rain to come back. He's going to get this Void Ray out. And uh oh, the Sentry's trying to force field off the Roaches, but the problem is the Sentry's they only tickle those Roach units. And this wall will eventually fall. Nexus Cannon at the natural. Going to try to help out a little bit, but just. Oh, actually working against the probes inside the main base as the Sentries get taken out easily. There we go. And GG is called. Sulky defeats Rain in the fifth set. It looks like these Zerg players have realized Rain is just too solid in a macro game. So let's go in with the timing attack or cripple him earlier on in the game. And this is fantastic on a map like this where the Protoss player, they don't ex they don't actually scout what their opponent is doing and they play greedy as possible. Yeah. This is a reason why so many other Protoss players started playing the gateway expand build on this map instead of the Nexus first. You know what I noticed? Runjin Stars today, they did two easy cheesy builds. They didn't devise some crazy strategy. They just went in the first set, light one for just two uh, two racks. One of them was proxy Reapers to take out Fantasy. And then in the fifth set here, Soul Key just went for an early pool against his opponent and got an easy win as well. So overall, you know, 
They didn't really reveal too many strategies, nothing you know, really too crazy or specific, and they got a 4-1 victory. S S or, um, Wunjin Stars just doing a great job at reminding everybody, hey, we're top dogs, and we're going to 4-0 one team, we're going to 4-1 the next.